Uh, the beginning was very bad. Uh, we had absolutely no money. The money that was put up by distant relatives, my father immediately returned it. And the only possession that we were legally permitted to take out of Germany was a shipping container of household goods and furniture. But we arrived without a penny, and for the first four or five weeks, we were split up with friends that my parents had in Nuremberg, friends who went to Palestine much earlier. I stayed with one family. My sister stayed with the uh, my with my father's former law associate, and my parents were put up uh, with a family who were very well-to-do. They were bankers. So for four or five weeks, we, we were refugees. You know, we, we couldn't even stay together as a family. I don't remember exactly how it happened, but then finally my father decided to move to Tel Aviv. All these friends were in Jerusalem, and we, uh, I think he, he thought there would be better opportunities for him to make a living in Tel Aviv. And they took an apartment, and after about five weeks, we moved in with the furniture that had arrived by that time. And immediately before it was even delivered, my parents decided to sell some of the furniture, including a very beautiful dining room. And I think the first six weeks or so, we lived on the proceeds of uh, uh, the furniture that they sold. By that time in 1939, we, we got to Palestine in February, I believe. Uh, it was already very difficult. There was not an awful lot of food, and I think life was pretty much of a struggle. My parents took a two, three-bedroom apartment and immediately rented one room. My sister and I slept in what was also the living room, and my parents had the bedroom. And I think with renting one room, my mother did part-time work as a nurse. She was trained as a nurse in World War I and was a Red Cross nurse. And I don't even remember what my father did at the beginning. But my parents did not have the money to send us to school. If I have to work, if I cannot go to school, I would like to learn cabinet making, and I became an apprentice. My sister apprenticed as a uh, dressmaker, and I think my salary as an apprentice was something like $2 a month, but that, hel that helped, and my sister got about the same. With that and my mother's part-time work, we managed to survive and subsist. When the war broke out, I, I continued my apprenticeship, and we were bombed. Tel Aviv was bombed a few times, but not too serious by Italian planes, and I mean, the Italians were not very good fighters, so they missed most of their uh, whatever they wanted to bomb, and there was no major damage. There was very little food, and the fact that you couldn't get much food, and my mother didn't know how to cook, I'm surprised that I survived. The only way to cook was a little Primo's stove. It's like a camp stove with uh, uh, petrol, petrol, neft, in, in what's called neft in Israel, and you had to pump it up. So my mother had two of those things, and it, it was pretty bad. Uh, my parents, trying to prepare for the emigration, bought a new refrigerator, and it turned out the current, the German didn't work in Palestine, and there was no way to convert it, so they had to pay to convert it to an icebox. And it was airtight, and every day they came in Tel Aviv with the ice blocks and 
um, we had to run down and buy a quarter block of ice, and that's, that's the way we lived. So the conditions were pretty bad, but I continued my own uh, apprenticeship. My father, by that time, started a very small uh, enterprise, which was the equivalent, not the equivalent, but it was minute, uh, like the automobile association that we have here. Nobody had done that in Palestine. He did that together with somebody else, and I think for about two or three years, he earned enough money that we were able to exist. Uh, 